We are no longer the wealthiest middle class in the world. The country is falling apart. In the US, the middle class is shrinking. Pew Research Center data shows that in 1971 61% of adults lived in middle-income households by 2016 that the number was down to 52%. Americans as a whole now have over $13.8 trillion in debt, a number that's gone up nearly every quarter for the past six years. Almost 40 million Americans have lost their jobs since the coronavirus pandemic struck in March. More than the population of Canada. 21% of Americans now rely on welfare, 80% live paycheck to paycheck. The number of people living in vans and tents has been increasing at an alarming rate. The middle class is disappearing, squeezed between taxation and inflation. Goodbye middle class, the percentage of wealth owned by the top 1% just got even bigger. Previously affluent middle-class Americans are now queuing for handouts at food banks, as America experiences the worst downturn since the 1930s and the Great Depression. This is what happens when your government doesn't have a furlough scheme and gives the money to the executives instead. As the cost of living has risen faster than our incomes have, more Americans have been squeezed out of the middle class with each passing month. Credit cards, student debt with no degree, worthless degree, 10-year auto loans, Crimea River. The K-12 cartel has become a de facto stupid factory, stamping out worthless slugs. The majority have been forced to hand over their wealth to the state to fund their pension Ponzi. Pure socialism and that pension Ponzi is a debt. There is no capital. The end result, wealth inequality, pensioner poverty, austerity, high taxes, lack of investment. If you're not prepared right now, it's too late. Wait till the food shortage starts after this year's harvest. The farmers were not able to plant, thus harvest yields are low and will continue to be low for years to come. Food riots are coming to a city near you. There is still time to plant veggies. Food shortages, fiat money is backed by food. New dumb serfs are born every minute. Future tax serfs will work for food and water. You trade your time for money. Read food, water, etc. Your time is up when you go broke deep in debt and or can't work anymore. Of course, these opinions of mine are a bit obscure and don't apply to the wealthy. However, given that people work for more than the essentials, like food, clothing, and shelter, not working means no essentials, and though I oversimplified it with food, you'll understand better when the food supply gets disrupted. Venezuela understands this all too well, Zimbabwe does too. There are only two classes left in this country. Those who have enough in the stock market to make a difference. And those who don't and the gap grows wider. Where is the fair return on savings? The good old USA has the worst wealth inequality in all countries. Three people, Bezos, Buffett and Bill Gates, combined wealth is more than the combined wealth of 50% of the country. Absolute worst in the world. Even in India, it takes nine persons. Proving the USA is even worse than India on the wealth inequality measurement. After the coming crash, reset, only a small percentage of people will have the resources, savings, knowledge to keep their own homes, those with large mortgages will get smashed. Wealth will flow into a moneyed, property-owning class, which will be between 5-10% of the population. The rest of the population will never have the chance to own property or assets. They will have to live hand-to-mouth. At the minute the hand-to-mouth class is roughly around 50 to 60 percent and growing every year, let's say it grows at 3 to 4 percent per year, then within a decade this will come true. Sadly, this can't be stopped. Many people have already given up and now base their entire life on a hand-to-mouth, week-to-week existence. The youth see no future, instead of rebellion like the punks of the late 70s, these downtrodden kids are happy enough to dodge reality by playing PlayStation or talking to imaginary friends on social media. The American neo-feudalism will be the logical conclusion of the American clan corporate capitalism imposed by the USA in 1913. It is the giant sucking sound of our fascist government using corporate socialism to bleed the taxpayers to support the kingmakers. The upper class has already taken a good chunk out of the stock market. Now they're waiting to buy everything up cheaply after the crash. This depression will transform America beyond the obvious. Just wait until the Fed wants to inflate away the debt. The middle classes will disappear completely or be redefined as the 90% to 95% percentile. 
Middle class America, you are an endangered species, your children and grandchildren will pay the COVID debt through their organs and labor. We are less than a decade away from Soylent Green, and yet the ignorant masses come out every Thursday at 8 p.m. to clap and bang on their pots and pans. They are the dead men walking but are too stupid to realize it. Whilst they can't sleep at night through fear and spend their days praying to their god, the big government, to make it all better again. They are willing to line up in an orderly queue, keeping six feet apart to be slaughtered by the same people in power they worship as gods. The middle class private sector class was already mortally wounded after Clinton, Bush, and Obama. This is the final nail in the coffin and will eliminate the private sector and the American middle class. The only sector that has survived is the government employees who continued getting paid even while they were shut down. The USA will become more like China, where the brightest student fights each other for a government job instead of some private sector work. So many Americans are happily bought off for a mere $1,200. Acceptance of slavery is worse than slavery itself. Offshore accounts hide over half the wealth of the Uber class. We cannot compare the lower 99.99% to them. They own half of this planet. All roads lead back to the fiat money system. It was introduced to tax and enslave the public. What we need is a sound monetary system without government interference, precious metals, or barter. We are forced to accept a currency that loses value every single second. The rich, in collusion with the government, have robbed the middle class blind. How is the poor responsible for all the money that is being printed out of thin air to bail out banks and big corporations? We pay taxes to feed the 1%. We are carrying a huge parasitic load, no more no less. We are truly slaves, and those who vote and support this sick system are simply clueless. Bottom line in two simple sentences. You suffer because you are forced to use Federal Reserve notes. Your life sucks because the Fed and the Wall Street gang stole all the wealth of the nation with the help of the guys you vote for. Period. The Fed creates wealth for those with political power. It destroys the wealth of others who lack political power. In the beginning, the gross numbers are impressive, while folks at the bottom suffer. In the end, even those who receive wealth transfers lose. By the time the economy collapses, everyone has forgotten what caused the problem. It's called the American dream because it isn't real. The American dream no more. The American nightmare more like. The reason they call it the American dream is because you have to be asleep to believe it. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the full truth, and nothing but the truth. The middle class family life and security have largely disappeared. The first cause is, neoliberal globalization, is something far less organic, or evolutionary than many would like to believe. It has to do with free trade, outsourcing, and the transfer of huge amounts of capital, entire industries, and millions of jobs to places like China with near zero cost labor. It was not the working and middle class that benefited. They lost. It was the multinational corporations, the investment banksters, and the rich who benefited. From the 1980s on, all our governments, and all economists knew what this was doing to our economics, and they all knew the trend which was bringing out nations from creditor nations to debtor nations. The banksters in the West loved it because with the increased deficit financing trying to maintain our standard of living, the governments had to borrow more from them. In the process, they became even more powerful. With fewer jobs, less cash, there was less security for the things which really matter in raising a family, all supposedly because we want to buy our tiki-taki at the lowest possible cost no matter what it does to us in the long run. As for China, the one-child policy which began in 1980 and which has caused huge demographic problems for that nation, was, in fact, a condition of the US for opening up the trade that went back to the 1972 Nixon-Kissinger negotiations with the PRC government. There was no need for it as the Chinese people were already on their own, reducing their offspring from six per couple down to three. If the anti-child, population reduction elites who run our nations were behind the Chinese one-child policy, as well as our own anti-family and population reduction policies, as most certainly they are, then they of all people were in a position in overseeing free trade to see exactly what it was doing to family security in the West. The fact is all of the elites are bastards, and the only way the middle class will have any peace or justice for any kind of security is to remove all of them from power and strip them of their wealth. 
since they deregulated banking and took off all the safeguards put in to prevent a 1930s style crash, we immediately get three crashes in 20 years. We need to ban banking across state lines again, and Amazon needs to be broken into 50 independent pieces. The people that fled the renter status of feudalism by settling the new world became owners. The country that threw out George III was almost totally middle class because most people lived on farms and in homes that they owned outright. The foisting of the Fed was the destruction of a real middle class since inflation forced people to borrow from the banksters in order to build what they could do independently before. Property taxes are an abomination since it converts everyone into renters. The definition of the middle class, no matter how impoverished, is someone who owns his property entirely unencumbered by debt. Today there are three classes in America. 1. The 1%. 2. The middle class, which is 12% of the population, and actually making a living wage. 3. The new lower class which makes 87% of the population. Globalized wage slaves with huge indebtedness. The middle and the poor get harvested, and the rich get richer. This was the real purpose of globalism. The best way to define the middle class is this people in the middle class borrow money from banks, for houses, cars, etc. The lower classes can't borrow, and the rich do not borrow, except through corporate entities, which are actually quite legally distinct. Now, some bloke out there with a $10,000 per month mortgage certainly would say he is upper class. He is the upper middle, perhaps. The working class is what created the middle class. The educated working class was the upper middle. Now they're just all a bunch of debt slaves. The outward projection of the middle class looks good, but behind the scenes, it's living paycheck to paycheck. The only difference is that they're doing it in a nice house on the west side of town instead of a trailer on the south side down in the bottoms. The ceaseless rise of non-discretionary costs. Costs are rising at a ridiculous pace, property taxes, utility charges, and fees, the outflow is getting to be pretty heavy. It will be interesting to see who ends up naked when the next tide goes out. The elite feel you should be happy to have a job. You don't need savings or financial security. Now quiet down, and get back to work. Exactly, all by design to keep you slaving away while barely keeping your head above water. Same as it ever was. A roof over your head is also a luxury to the elite. Being middle class rather than muddle or upper class puts you at bigger risk from the government than either the rich who own the government or the muddles who really have no assets face. In 10 years, we'll have more government no matter who we elect, and it's the true middle class who will suffer from it. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.